Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you how to make a very basic table runner. You can make it any width and any length that you like. Also, I'll show you how to change the shape of each end of the table runner. You may want to have just round corners, just squared off rectangular corners, corners cut at an angle, or even make each end of the table runner pointed. In this particular version of the table runner, I'm using Joann's Home Essentials line of fabric. It is their budget-friendly decorative fabric. So I'm not going to use any type of cotton batting in it or even interfacing, but you can add that inside of your table runner. So you can use fusible fleece, fusible interfacing, or cotton batting. Just remember if you use cotton batting, you need to do your quilting stitches. So if you need information on how to do quilting stitches, check below your YouTube screen for that video link. Okay, let's get started. For this table runner, if you want to just make a short one, and which will be between 40 and 42 inches, all you need is a half a yard of fabric for the outside and a half a yard of fabric for the lining. If you want to make an extra long table runner, you're going to need double that amount. So you would need one yard of each. Fold your fabric with the selvage edges together. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut this edge straight because it's rarely straight when you get it from the fabric store. And I'm cutting it 15 inches wide. You can cut it any width you want. So go over 15 inches or whatever the width you want yours and do a cut and then go over another 15 inches for the long table runner and cut again. Now you want to cut your lining exactly the same way. If you're making the longer table runner, you want to take your two pieces, cut those selvage edges off and then bring those two pieces front sides together and at just one end pin and stitch a one half inch seam and then do the same thing with your lining fabric. And then on both your outside fabric and your lining press that seam open. Now you want to bring both your lining and your fabric for the top front sides together, the pretty side. So on this you can see the pretty side is here. It's facing down towards my lining. If you have a print on your lining, make sure that print is also front side up so that no matter which way you look at it, you're looking at the back sides of your fabric. Indicate an area on just one of your long edges that is going to be your opening. So where I've got two pins, is where I'm going to stop stitching and so I will start stitching here. Now on just one edge you're leaving this opening and you're going to stitch on each side the two longest edges one half inch seam. For now you're leaving, leaving each end open. If you want to just make the shorter table runner you don't have to worry about this next step. But if you want a longer table runner and you've stitched your two ends together, it's going to come out to 80 some inches. But maybe you don't want it quite that long. So I'm going to show you how to easily shorten it. I like the seam in the very middle of the table runner because if you're putting a centerpiece, it kind of covers up that seam. So what you're going to do is fold it in half at the seam. Okay, and make sure it's lined up because you want it an even amount on each end. So let's say you wanted a 60 inch long table runner. Well, divide that number in half and from the seam go out 30 inches and add an extra half inch and cut off whatever it is you don't want in your table runner. 
I'm now going to demonstrate how to change the shape of the end of your table runner. If you want it as a rectangle, then you can just skip this step. But now I'm going to show you how to make a pointed table runner. So take your table runner, now these are just sample fabrics, and fold it longest edge to longest edge. And find some lines on your cutting mat and you're going to push it up into one of the corners. And you have to decide how sharp of a point you want. Maybe you don't want a very long point or you want a really sharp point. So I'm going to make it kind of a sharp point. So I'm for this one, it's probably going to be more on a longer table runner. I'm going to go down three inches from this corner and bring my ruler up over here to the folded corner and then cut. And then you would go to the other end and do the same thing. And when you unfold it, this is what it looks like. So now let me show you how to make your corners kind of cut at an angle. So again, you're going to fold it in half and I'm just going to cut about an inch and a half this way. Remember on a larger table runner, you're probably going to want to take more than that off. So I'm going to put it at an inch and a half here and an inch and a half over here. Okay, and there you go. And then cut. And when you're done with this one, this is what it looks like. So you may want to practice these on some scrap fabric until you get the right size and look that you want. Now I'm going to show you how to do a rounded corner. Take something round, any, any size that you want. And if you want a really big rounded end, then you would get a much bigger size circle. It could be a large plate, but if you want just a gentle curve on each corner, just take something smaller. Take your template that you're using and when the sides hit the edge, the sides of the template hit the edge, then you, we can either draw around it or just cut around it with your rotary cutter, like that. And then when you're done, your corners are rounded. After you have cut whatever shape you wanted at the end, then go ahead and finish stitching your half inch seam all around. I did the rounded corner, so like I said, I just went around a half inch. If you did the pointed corner, make sure when you get to the very pointed end, or excuse me, if you did the pointed end, then make sure when you get to that pointed area, you leave your needle down through the fabric, turn your table runner and continue stitching the other way. You do the same thing on the one where the corners are just kind of angled a little bit. Those are still some sharp corners, so make sure you leave your needle down through that fabric when you turn it. Now on the rounded table runner, you're going to do little clips just before you get to that stitch line. So you want to do it on all four corners. If you're doing any of the pointed ones or where there's sharp corners, then of course you need to cut some of that fabric off each corner and cut it down to about one eighth of an inch wide. Now go through your opening, reach inside and begin pulling it front side out. Now reach back in through your opening and go down to your corners and poke them out if they're sharp corners or go down if it's a pointed table runner and push your corners out. Now you want to turn your opening uh, in one half inch and pin it closed. And make sure you press all of your edges really flat all the way around. Then you're going to stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around all four sides. I'm now going to give you suggestions on how you could embellish a table runner like this. 
Now the print is kind of busy, but it has some beautiful fall colors in it, and I wanted to add a little sparkle. So on here, you may or may not be able to see the stones, but I've tried to place a color that was similar to the stone together. So I took a leaf and a color of the stone and spread it out. Now there's several different types you can put on there. These do not have a way of sewing them on, so you could glue them down. Because I like putting Scotch Guard on my table runners, I don't usually put food on them. This isn't going to be washed. I would probably spot clean. I don't mind gluing them down. But if you prefer they were stitched on, I know Joanne sells these and they've got a hole at each end of the jewel and you could hand stitch them on. Then when I, I want to give you a few other suggestions on how to embellish a table runner. You could buy these beads that are on a little fabric band usually and you would stitch it inside of your seam and you could add a little bit at each end and this looks really pretty. I've given this type as gift to people and here it is with a green. You could even do this for Christmas. It's really, really pretty for Christmas. You would just stitch it into the seam and you can see how pretty it can look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you try it. You can make a lot of table runners just like this very, very quick and they make great gifts. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. And if you're interested in other table runners or other uh, beginners projects, make sure you check below your YouTube screen for those video links. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.